Okay, so let's focus on the left branch here. Well, we can easily apply double negation, as you can see, to uh, not 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 p and not q. So now we have not p and not q. We star our formula, uh, and then here, of course, we have the conjunction rule: um, not p, not q. So all that's left on the left side um, is p or q. So we need two branches. On one we assume p, on the other we assume q. And as you can see, both branches close because we've got a contradiction there. p contradicts not p, q contradicts not q, so both branches close. Right, how about our other branch, our branch on the right? Well, again, pretty, pretty simple. We've got the uh, negated disjunction up here. So we can derive not p and not q. Um, there they are. Uh, and uh, there we have negated conjunction. So either not p is false or not q is false. We uh, split it into two more branches, um, not not p and not not q, which of course by double negation gives us p and q which of course contradict the not p and not q up here. Okay then, um, that means that our whole tree here is closed. Um, we've derived a contradiction on every branch, so our original argument, the, before we applied the negation to it, our original argument up here is valid. Our whole tree is closed to so our original argument is valid. Again, it's an argument with no premises, so that's a, a logical truth. Okay, I just want to end that with a, a quick tip, which is that you should apply non-branching rules before you apply the branching rules. Uh, it, it, it doesn't matter if you apply the branching rules first, but if you, if you do the branching rules before the non-branching rules, then the tree ends up looking a lot more cluttered. So say, say on the left side, if we'd applied the uh, rule for uh, the rule for disjunction first um, before we did the rule for conjunction then we what we have to have done is we needed we would have needed to apply the conjunction rule twice because if you branch then you'd have to have done the conjunction rule twice on each um, on each on each branch so it's generally a good idea to apply uh, non-branching rules before you apply branching rules it just like, makes the tree less cluttered Right then, now I want to have a look at a tree for an invalid argument. Let's take this argument here, uh, rather more complex than what we've seen before. Okay, so first of all we list the premises and the negation of the conclusion. Um, obviously the negation of this conclusion would be not not, uh, if not p then q, uh, if not p then r. Um, by double negation, though that's just the true conditional, and uh, I'm omitting the double negation just to save space, but you can see that that works. Um, okay, so the, the second premise is a negated conjunction. Um, the third is uh, a conditional, uh, so both of those will branch. But our first premise here is a, um, is a negated conditional, uh, so, um, so uh, we can we can derive from that true antecedent false consequent, uh, which is not p and not q. Um, okay, the negated conjunction. Well, one of those must be false, um, so we we don't know whether it's both or which one it is or or whatever. But uh, we we assume that not p is false on one branch, which of course by double negation is p, which contradicts not p up here. So we close that branch. And then we have to assume not Q and R, uh, the other part of the conjunct. Um, OK then, now we have the conditional here, if not P, then R. Um, now remember, a conditional is true either if the antecedent is false or the consequent is true. So if the antecedent is false, that gives us uh, not not P, which is P, which is again a contradiction. And then we have R, and that leaves us with the negated conjunction here. 
Um, so uh, we have we have to assume we have to branch again. Assume not Q and not R. Obviously, not R contradicts R, which is a contradict which is a contradiction. Obviously. Um, so now we've got uh, not Q here. So R has resulted in a contradiction, but this branch here containing not Q, uh, that doesn't contradict anything. That's, that's open. And yet we have no more rules to apply. So um, our tree is finished, but it remains open. And this means that the original argument here, this one at the top here, is invalid. Um, and we can quite easily use the open branch of this tree to construct a counterexample to our original argument. Um, this is essentially what truth trees are. They're a very mechanical method for finding counterexamples. Uh, it, it's quite easy. Uh, if a propositional variable occurs on a branch, then you, you assign it 1, we assign it truth. If the negation of a variable occurs, we assign it uh, we assign the variable 0, we assign it falsity. And if it doesn't occur either way, then we can we can assign it either zero or one. Um, but let's take a look at our open branch. We have not Q. So therefore the what we the assignment of Q is is zero. We assign Q zero. Um, we have R, so so R is one, and we have not P, so P the assignment of P is zero. So here we have our interpretation. Um, it assigns 1 to R and 0 to P and Q. Now we need to check that our counterexample works, uh, which is is very, very simple. Um, OK, so, so let's have a look at, at this then. We've, here's our interpretation. P is 0, Q is 0, R is 1. Well, since... Let's take a look at this conditional here. Um, Q is false. So Q is Q is false. And P is also false, which means not P is true. So let's have a look at that conditional. We've got a true antecedent and a false consequent. So the conditional as a whole is false. True antecedent, false consequent. Um, but look, it's negated here. So our false conditional becomes true by when it when it's negated that makes the negation of our condition of our false condition is true okay let's have a look at this conjunction so we start start here with the uh, q and r um well obviously q is false right so if q is false then this conjunct here must be false because q is false uh and then since this part of this larger conjunction is false. This this whole thing is a conjunct of this larger conjunction. Since this conjunct is false, this whole thing must be false. But again, look, it's negated. So that means that our whole formula here is true. Uh, finally, um, well, R is true on this on our conditional. If not P, then R. R is true. So that means that our conditional is true. But it's negated. So the whole formula is false. So let's have a look at what we've got then. Well, we've got a, uh, a true premises. First premise is true, second premise is true, and a false conclusion. So indeed, our argument is invalid. Um, this is a counterexample to our argument. So that's uh, that's basically what we can how we use truth trees. That's what truth trees are. That's what they do. That's that's we can use them to create good counterexamples, uh, and, and that's uh, basically it. I hope that was helpful. Thanks for watching.